This seemingly uninteresting patch of land, with its few surrounding villages, is one of the most important places on Earth, but almost no one has ever heard of it. Kept completely secret, erased from any maps for decades, this area we're heading straight into right now is where the Soviets, during the arms race with America, invented, tested, and detonated 456 of their nuclear and hydrogen bombs. The unaware locals of the region having later to bear its consequences forever. Equivalent to the Los Alamos of the United States, what the Soviet Oppenheimer would create here would change the course of history as we know it today. And there is evidence left behind of the work that was done. Abandoned bunkers, a radioactive lake, but most importantly, first-hand stories from the people who lived through it, who have never spoken to anyone on camera before, until now. We'll be heading to this desolate wasteland called the Semipalatinsk Test Site, located in the northeast of Kazakhstan. The most nuked place on the planet. With the scientist and expert Yurlan, the only person allowed to legally take people to this site. I don't think that any of us going into this trip, however, had fully grasped the importance of where we were heading to. <laughs> yeah, their, their energy is amazing. Their smiles are beautiful. You give good hugs. <laughs> Just like how Chernobyl started. Everyone was very jolly until we got there. <laughs> you are a scientist? I am coincidentally both tour guide and also I have education in this field. <laughs> I studied in um, the institute that was uh, related to Soviet uh, atomic industry, but the ins institute itself was established as a part of Soviet atomic project. To start our expedition, and before our more intense exploration of the radioactive lake, we set course to what was likely the most secretive town in the USSR, the Los Alamos of the Soviet Union. Strangely enough, even though Los Alamos was completely dismantled, most of this town still remains. What's the name of this town that we're in right now? Uh, the city is named after prominent Soviet scientist Igor Kurchatov, who was technical leader of the uh, whole Soviet atomic project. How would he compare to Oppenheimer? On he was a counterpart or peer to Robert Oppenheimer. Before the war, he had quite different interests. He was engaged mainly in electricity research, in physics. He always dreamed about uh, getting electricity and all kinds of energy, releasing uh, other kinds of energy. His great, big, uh, true passion was to uh, using nuclear energy peacefully. He was engaged in nuclear research only due to the war global politics. This settlement was established in 1947. It was never shown in maps. It was kept secret. It was not possible to buy train tickets for it. Local guys being recruited to Soviet army first were transported by airplane to Moscow and landed there and then transported back here. <laughs> and many of them truly served that they are somewhere near Moscow. Wow. And then, this was top, top secret. Yeah. So, we're going to step into an abandoned KGB building in one of the most secretive cities of the Cold War. The KGB was at the epicenter of the Soviet Union, serving both for domestic security and foreign intelligence. As a highly secretive organization, they were notorious for their surveillance tactics used for censorship and repression of political opposition, amongst many other purposes. They were in charge of the secrecy of this nuclear project and this was their headquarters. All of these abandoned Soviet buildings were looted. Everything was stripped for metals, parts, whatever was left behind when the Soviet army left. And people took advantage of that. So this is what's left. This whole floor is falling apart. Yeah. You'd say that this city was comparable to Los Alamos? I, I mean, this uh, town, yes, but secrecy was much stricter here, much stronger, yeah. and also much uh, more effective. It 
it's uh, strange to think about how powerful the Soviet Union once was and to now be standing in its literal ruins. Of especially the KGB building was like the most powerful secretive wing of it. driving into the place that was dedicated to where the Soviet soldiers lived at the time. This whole place was deserted. As you can imagine, in an area with such a strategic importance, there was a lot of military infrastructure surrounding it. They said like, oh, this town's abandoned. But this is like a mini city. This is massive, way bigger than I expected. It was the town of Chagan. In its best time, population was 11,000 people. And uh, after uh, USSR uh, collapsed, in 1994, we withdrew. So it was a secret city as well? Yeah. Besides the nuclear project, this area was also hiding a highly strategic and crucial long-range bomber base, as well as a city that housed all of its soldiers and families, now reminiscent of Chernobyl. anything and everything. I mean, the floors, just because they, they're the most enforced with steel. That's why they took the floors. Literally, everything is gone. It is really strange to be, like, we've been to a lot of abandoned buildings, but they usually just left, you know, they're not looted for the steel and the concrete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it almost resembles this complete imbalance of using resources and, and time and material to put in something that eventually meant nothing. Yeah. And ultimately people's own, people wanted to feed, their, to feed their kids and do better economically, especially at a time where communism fell as the Soviet Union fell. Everybody must have been in just like this state of like wanting to just collect any resources that can help elevate their them and their families out of the state that, that they were in. Although the soldiers of this unmarked town left, some of the locals who lived here and others who worked directly at the nuclear test site at the time still remain. Given the secrecy they lived in for so long, many refused to talk to us. However, after weeks of preliminary work from Yerlin, we found four people who agreed to share their stories, including one woman who is the last to live in this abandoned military town, and most who have never shared their stories ever before. As we make our way towards the exact places 456 bombs were detonated, we'd first hear four people's shocking stories who saw them in the sky. We worked with prochodes. In the city of Yelen, we were able to do the process. In what year did you move here? In what year did you move here? In 1976. When he saw the test, it was the Soviet Union. Когда он работал, это уже был современный Казахстан. А Национальный ядерный центр занимается как раз ликвидацией инфраструктуры и всех последствий испытаний ядерного оружия на территории Симпалатинского полигона. Мы же откуда знали, что это так страшно? А Теперь-то а все пишут и рассказывают, и показывают. А тогда-то в чем мы знали? Ничего не знали. А -а -а. Был, что в школе вот учитель преподавал? Где большая доза радиации до 30 минут там? Если там она не превышает нормы, больше работали. А так превышение дозы радиации было, если ага. оно повлияло на мое здоровье, ну, слава богу, мне 73 года уже будет. Ага. Я чувствую себя неплохо. You look younger. Моложе, как ты. And was he aware of the world politics that drove mm -hmm. all this activity? Поэтому мы тогда и подписывали они разглашений uh -huh. и вообще об этом мы никогда ничего не говорили. Кто что-то проговорился, тот я же говорю, мы больше его не видели. Он просто возвращался, да? Да, и все. В 91-м закрыли же полигон. Казахстан объявил мораторий. И все, все распалось, все разъехались. И пошел распад Союза. А что было? Ничего. Уезжали и все. Кто куда перевелся и все военный. Ну уезжали люди, а их же не остановишь, потому что жить надо было дальше, работать, 
дети, семьи, надо же было как-то работать, и поэтому уезжали. Военные все в это, а у нас не было никого военных, мы никуда и не уехали. Раскры... И с 96 по 99 мы работали с американцами. Закрывали что ли? So he basically disconnected the last, the last warhead that was. То есть вы участвовали, получается, вот разминировать вот это, вот это не разорвавшиеся. Да. Элементов может быть. Нет, так, так, так же атомная бомба, она должна была по этим идти по, ну взрывать. Наша та же работа, просто мы не успели запечатать, но не успели ее. So there was just a bomb here after the Soviet Union broke down. Yes, it stayed there for four years more. I don't think I've ever been a part of telling a story of such amplitude that has never really been told before. Like Chernobyl, I'd, people had told that story before. But here, people are speaking to us for the very first time. Yeah. We arrived where we're staying tonight. Where has it taken us? Welcome to the USSR. <laughs> first Soviet building, still interior is preserved as Soviet interior. <laughs> is it more people staying here? Nobody except it is uh, not commercial at all. It is corporate hotel. <laughs> what? Okay, please get your passports. Passports will be uh, sealed return in the morning. Okay. 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 Time to check in our rooms. Right here. Yeah. Why am I scared? <laughs> Then I guess we're sleeping in here because I don't dare to sleep alone. <laughs> Hello my friends, being able to make videos and short documentaries like the one that you're currently watching is literally everything that I want out of life right now. So I feel very grateful that you are here watching and hopefully enjoying and learning lots. But they also would not be possible without sponsors. And in today's video, that is BetterHelp. I've had periods where I've been successful and I've had periods where I've been very unsuccessful at setting goals. And what I've found actually very useful has been using the help of a therapist to set those goals. And I found that to be a huge help when it comes to being consistent and actually being able to stick to what I'm telling myself that I want to do. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and a lot less intimidating for a lot of people. Because essentially you can choose to have the therapy in whatever form you're most comfortable with, whether a phone call, video chat, or messaging. BetterHelp will give you access to one of their 30,000 therapists based on your needs, preferences, and location, which will give you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your city. You can start by clicking the link down below and then filling out a questionnaire about the current challenges that you are going through, and BetterHelp will then match you to a therapist based on your needs. If you feel like the therapist you're matched with isn't the one for you, you can switch with a click of a button at no additional cost. So if you want to support our channel and join the over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp, click the link in the description below or go to betterhelp.com slash yes theory to get 10% off your first month. And now on to the rest of our story. It was now time to drive into the frozen desert to explore the semi palatinsk nuclear test site. On this vast plain of dust was where more nuclear tests were conducted than any other place on Earth. The most nuked place on the planet. Criteria were quite strict to choose the land. First criteria was as low as possible density of population. Here it is less than one person per thousand square kilometers. In 1953, first hydrogen bomb in the world was blasted between four, four and five hundred uh, kilotons. earlier USA already tested hydrogen technology but it was not a real bomb it was just a hydrogen device all accumulated arsenals of USA and USSR were able to kill everything all life in the earth more than 600 times and literally crack the planet into pieces that we could do what destroy destroy all life in the planet six more than 600 times and crack the planet literally Six times to destroy the earth, yeah. 
what makes me so so sad yeah, yeah. i can feel it in the what, whole group what point do you stop at what point do you go we have enough you know like i mean is, is there any justification for having any ability to destroy the earth once you know he said we have enough to crack the earth in half that's how many bombs we have And, and that's in the power, that's in the hands of people that seem more and more erratic. Sometimes I'm not sure if the people who hold the, the launch buttons for those like fully comprehend their own, you know, their own consequence, right? I mean, well, if, if, one, if someone decides to press a button, human civilization is pretty much over. They detonated the bomb, so it's a, it's a bunker that is about 12 kilometers out. Wow. They used some thick steel here. It's so well enforced. So it was designed to bear direct atomic bombing. Ah. You see the walls are about two meters thick and as well as the ceiling. So even the locals around here didn't know that this was happening no. here? Nobody knew? No. Объясни товарищам, что в то время, как сейчас, не было такой гласности. И никто не знал про этот полигон, и когда взрывали, и что это было, и что это трясло. Это, это все засекречено было строго-строго. So this is the entrance to an underground laboratory, 86 meters down. You see the hall, it is a door entrance and the cabin of the elevator. A guy descended there by rope, he says the equipment is still there, just flooded by ground waters. Жители вывозили за деревню, там был овраг такой вот, как вырытый там, и туда мы ложились, да, укрывали одеялами нас, детей все, да, потому что они там лежали, все село. Yolan, is this where they detonated the bomb from? Yes. Объявит нам, чтобы мы выходили из дома. Вдруг он завалится. Окошко можете. Вот печка вот так дверь откроет, зала высыпется. Ну, в общем, вот так дрожало все. Люстры вот так качаются. But you had to lay down because because of shock wave can smash you. А у нас тоже там было. Мы что прямо и тут прямо с ног шибаются. Там солдат не разбивает, бегут, да, например. What are you feeling right now? It's just so sad that we've spent all these resources and human power into just such bull**** yeah. and we still do it. Sipolatinsk uh, nuclear test site is the only place in the world where you can walk literally on nuclear test site. In all other places you would visit only museums and even in those museums you will be required to leave your cameras and uh, smartphones. It was time to head to the epicenter of it. We're on our way to one of the only accessible, yet still radioactive testing sites in Kazakhstan, Lake Shagan, which we will need protective gear for. On January 15, 1965, the Soviet Union tested a hydrogen bomb 11 times the strength of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima by the United States military in 1945. The 140 kiloton device was buried nearly 180 meters in the ground, and upon detonation, the blast created a crater of 454 meters wide and 100 meters deep, throwing soil nearly one and a half kilometers up in the air. The blast was so large that it took the dust nearly 50 days to settle, forming the current hills that now surround the crater. Shortly after the test, a nearby river was diverted to fill the crater and turn it into what locals now call the atomic lake. Do not pick anything from the ground. When walking, try to raise it as little dust as possible. I didn't realize you were putting on heavy duty stuff. Yeah, it's to avoid uh, having any anything contaminate our clothes. Before we get back in the car, we're going to have to take everything off. We're just going to put it in a trash bag. The most heavily contaminated areas of the test sites are completely fenced off from the public. This lake, however, has levels safe enough to approach with protective gear on. We must be careful about our time spent here and making sure we don't inhale or kick up any of the dust below the snow. Rock, 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 rock. 
Облучение было. Ну, как, заболел? Заболел. А много ее тоже было? Конечно, хватало. Вон там книжки с госпиталя, там только это облучение, малокровие, там, там только вот они были. Мы просто маленькие не вникали в это. Даже взрослые не знали, что самое вредное это грипп. А не то, что там земля сотрясается, стекла бьются. А грипп после этого ветром разносило и радиацию по всей, по всей местности. Мы это не, даже не знали. Сначала идет вспышка, прямо такая вспышка, конечно, невозможно, а потом уже Гриб выходит вот этот, который. Ну, я же говорил, ощущение, мы же хоть дети были, да, но какой-то душе, как не испуг, а какой-то был такой момент, что именно что-то плохое делается, знаете, потому что да, ощущение такое было внутри. От земли вот так, как будто ножка, а потом вот такая большая э, шляпа, ну, из, э, ну, наверное, газ вот это или что то А потом он рассеется по земле а -а -а. и все, и нету ничего. А постарше Буба я ах, за мамкой ездил, потому что там все становилось темно, все в пыли. Там, понимаешь, ощущение такое было страшное, конечно, а -а -а. сказать. Там ветер и... страшный был, урагай. Because of dust it was so black that it looked like in the night. scale of it when you're in it. How did one explosion make all of this? And why? And why, yeah, exactly. Why? That's a great question. Why? Have you ever heard anyone being affected by the nuclear test? No, нам всем теперь вот говорят так, что вот эти болезни все у нас бытат испытаний. Ну, выбросы, конечно, были ядерные, потому что 89-й год, я как раз беременна ходила с сыном. Теперь сына катаракта врожденная, он минус 16 диоптрии. Это радиация, это полностью облучение там идет, даже медицинская у меня энциклопедия есть, там облучение есть. Были вертолеты летали, замеряли, что они замеряли сначала. А теперь мы все понимаем, что это выброс радиации был, что вот кому-то инвалидами порождались, и не дай бог, конечно. Родители нас-то укрывали, а сами нет. У меня мама в 49 лет умерла от онкологии. У него отец и мать тоже умерли от онкологии. Any any colleagues in work who did similar work to him that have had health complications that affected them in a negative way? Были много. Я же говорю, это страдал народ в основном. On the very spot we are walking blew a bomb that could have incinerated an entire city. As we walk on the ashes of the very definition of destruction, one cannot help but feel existential about how our fear of those we consider our enemy drove some of humanity's greatest minds to bring such carnage into existence. Having all been up close to such destruction, we wanted to know how they all felt about the current state of the world.
as someone who's participated in kind of dismantling the system after Soviet Union collapsed, what do you feel seeing the world kind of descend into another Cold War and the threat of nuclear war rising again and being at an all-time high since then? Ну, это, конечно, к этому я отношусь очень плохо, конечно, что, что было, да, но достижение достижения, каждое государство свое именно, ну, мне хотелось, чтобы было мирное небо над головой, да, чтобы никаких конфликтов ни с кем не было, и мы, казахстанцы, именно вот хотим, чтобы, понимаете, всегда было мирное население, и вот чтобы вот эти ядерные это взрывы призывают тоже всех, у кого ядерная держава, да, ну, сокращать или как-то вообще, Казахстан мы, как всегда, за безъядерные вооружения. You have a great grandson here and your grandson. What is your message to all the young people in the world? Ну что же хотела сказать, чтобы во всем мире, чтобы люди жили в согласии, в мире, и нас, чтобы будущее наше поколение выросло здоровым, крепким, понимаете, и занимались спортом больше, понимаете. Любой вид спорта. He runs, he runs every day and he goes to swimming pool. Still to this day. Советского Союза уже не существует. Сейчас, в данный момент, люди до сих пор путают, они не различают разницу между Советским Союзом и современным Казахстаном. Потому что то, что делает сейчас Казахстан, это очень важно для всего мира, потому что это пример, во-первых, для всего мира, чтобы отказаться от этого. И моя позиция такова, чтобы люди правильно это все понимали и понимали, насколько это плохо, потому что среди нынешней молодежи есть и послы, и министры будущие, и поэтому у них должно э, быть четкое формирование вот этой мысли. Вот и все. Война это страшно, ребята, это очень страшно. Сейчас вот Украина воюет с Россией, я не знаю там, это страшно, ребята гибнут, молодые. Я как мать, у меня сын тоже 34 года. Вот племянник ушел на войну, вот уехал на полгода, опять на войну. В России живет сестра. И вот на полгода на войну, это жутко, это ужас. Я, я вообще против войны. Я не знаю, я не могу понять людей, которые хотят войны. Зачем вы, как сказать, ссоритесь страны между собой? Вы дружите, ездите друг к другу, торгуйте. У кого что-то нету, тому то дайте. У вас этого нету, то возьмите. Не надо воевать, не надо. Мир, 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 мир надо, мир, мир. И помогать друг другу надо. И ездить, и в гости, и встречать друг друга, и провожать. Как вот по-соседски жить. Понятно, что надо. Замечательно. Мир надо, мир. Безъядерное. Вообще все перешли в Казахстан. Kazakhstan abandoned all of its nuclear weapons, although it had fourth biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. Wow. I wish all countries uh, behaved the same way. It's his, no? It's yeah, what? His. <laughs> <laughs> what? Present, present. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Wow. He just gifted us the medal of closing the test site. Are you sure? Yeah, no, no, please take it. Thank you. We will Yeah, you can tell him that we will protect it and spread peace as far as possible with his messages. Yeah. Yeah, what? Всего хорошего. Всего до свидания. До свидания.